Welcome back, Canaanites. I hope everyone had a fun New Year's Eve, and I hope your New Year's Day is nice and relaxing. And to hopefully help you in that relaxation, it's time for another Halo Monthly Recap, where we go over all things Halo from the last month. 2022 is here, but let's spend one last moment looking back on 2021. And to kick things off, we open with In Case You Missed It. The channel saw a massive 13 videos this month, all sharing a pretty common theme, Halo Infinite. The month started with my spoiler-free review of Halo Infinite's campaign, and almost a month later, I gotta say, my feelings haven't fundamentally changed much. Next up was an unboxing of a Halo Infinite Care package of sorts, courtesy of Microsoft. Following that was Launch Day. The day started with the release of four guide videos for various collectibles in Halo Infinite, followed by a legendary run stream. Not long after that, we got our first real look at the Halo TV series, which I naturally broke down in detail. Because people keep mentioning it, I did also write the script for IGN's breakdown of the trailer. So for any of y'all wondering why the two sound similar, that's why. Anyway, that was followed by an analysis of Memory Agent, a brief audio drama released in the hours before Halo Infinite launched. After that, I covered the final cannon fodder issue for 2021 and Grim Brother 1's last issue, followed by releasing my own guide for the Halo Infinite audio logs. Closing out the month, we had a pair of Theorycraft videos, one speculating on how the Didact could return, and the other about how the Endless, the Harbinger's species, could be connected to the Precursors. If you missed out on any of those, links as always can be found below, either in the description box or the pinned comment, depending on how I have to divide things up. Now, before we move on, as I know it's a burning question for many of my subscribers, let's talk about a full-on review for Halo Infinite. At the moment, I'm planning to finish up my review for Halo Divine Wind, after which we'll be diving headfirst into an in-depth breakdown of Halo Infinite in the same vein as what I did for Halo Wars 2 and Halo 5. That will take time, it will be broken into multiple parts, though I'm not sure how many as of yet, and it'll conclude with a Q&A where I can address any lingering questions y'all may have. So, in short, it's coming. I like to take my time with the lore and make sure I understand everything the game has to tell us. I'll miss some stuff inevitably, but I want to give you all the best breakdown I can. So, look forward to that, and thank you as always for your patience. With that though, we can move forward to official news and releases, and boy is there a lot to cover this month. Let's start with the big news this time, the launch of Halo Infinite. Though its multiplayer had been out since November 15th, Fans eagerly awaited 10 a.m. Pacific time for the campaign to become available, and damn was the hype real. There were issues, no game launch is perfect, but the full game finally became available to millions of Halo fans, both veterans and newcomers, with what I would call an overwhelmingly positive reception. A massive blog post also dropped, with statements from Bonnie Ross and Joe Staden, along with information on some of the game's secrets and links to ancillary material. Accompanying the game's launch, 343 released a new audio drama titled Memory Agent. Following an Oni lieutenant who can only retain information for seven hours at a time, the series is a trip through some nostalgic moments and a genuinely compelling addition to the Halo canon. Check it out if you haven't already. Halo would also be present at this year's Game Awards, where it won the 100% fan-voted Player's Choice Award, speaking to the franchise's enduring popularity. The Game Awards also saw the release of the first Halo TV show trailer. Accompanying the launch of Halo Infinite were a number of promotions and items, including a pair of exclusive posters and the official soundtrack. Fans could get a vinyl edition of the soundtrack, along with traditional downloads and physical media. The new Jazzwares Master Chief helmet launched this month, and pre-orders for the Nerf Needler closed at the end of the month. The Art of Halo Infinite book released on December 14th, and the Deluxe Edition is available for pre-order, releasing on the 11th. Meister Watches released another watch, this one Master Chief themed, and a 20th anniversary Master Chief Funko went on sale. A lot of other minor promotions and crossovers came and went throughout the month as well. While the Halo Infinite campaign was the main focus this past month, the multiplayer didn't go without attention. Following backlash and feedback from the community, 343 began efforts to rework the game into something more fashionable for fans. This started with the addition of more social playlists for Arena, some changes to Ranked and BTB that would hopefully result in better matches, updates to the challenge system and the challenges themselves, among many other fixes yet to come or already implemented. 
Big changes will have to wait, but 343 is absolutely here in the community's feedback. Following last month's Tenrai Fractures event, Infinite's second event, Winter Contingency, launched on the 21st with new unlockables for players. And of course, December 17th saw the HCS Raleigh Kickoff Major. As we wrap up the news and releases section, we'll highlight a few of our remaining stories. December featured one last cannon fodder for the year, and the last to be written by Jeff Easterling, aka Grim Brother One, before he passes the reins to Alex Wakeford, whom fans may know better as Horaspus. Thank you, Jeff, for this amazing series, and best of luck to Alex for his new job. Additional Halo-themed skins for Minecraft were made available in conjunction with Halo Infinite's launch, and 343 Industries saw a new Employee Spotlight article. This one focused on Tiana Titan Los, a senior experienced designer on the Transmedia Content Design team. Tiana was in charge of the new Halo Waypoint design and user experience. As usual, it's an insightful read that I recommend to anyone watching. Finally, MCC saw its mod tools expanded to include Halo 2 and Halo 3. 343 released a large blog post diving into the tools available to players and how to access them. With that, we can now move to community highlights, and I think there's no better place to start than with this nostalgic ad for Halo made by Nicholas Young. It's a great emotional journey for any longtime Halo fan. Check it out on Twitter. Next, we have this fantastic piece from Artemis on Twitter, showing several Spartans preparing for a banished attack on the Infinity. Check out the piece on Twitter and see if you can spot which Spartan is mine. After that, we have this amazing take on a post-Infinite lock, left with minimal equipment after a near-death encounter with Hyperius and Tavares. If Locke did have an encounter with the pair, I would love to see a version of him like this. Minimal armor and equipment, and focusing on his own skills. Check out the artist, Garrett Post, on Twitter. Next up, we have a cool Halo 5 montage from Frank Cox, set to the first opening to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. To use that song isn't simple lip service, however, as the montage fully embraces everything JoJo. Check it out here on YouTube. After that, we take a trip down memory lane with some guy Matt, who talks about his personal journey with Halo and his pre-launch feelings about Infinite. It's a great video, so check it out here on YouTube. Next up, we have an audiobook adventure from Photon. Following a group of ODSTs, this series is more lighthearted than one might expect for Halo, but it works here. Check out the full adventures on Photon's YouTube channel. Following that, we have an amazing Mega Constructs stop-motion video from Sassy Crocodile. It's damn impressive and does some cool things I don't think I've ever seen in a Halo Mega Constructs animation like this. Check it out here on YouTube. After that, we have a 20th anniversary tribute from Hell Spartan 94, covering the story of the franchise up to infinite. Check it out on YouTube. Next up, we have something I didn't initially expect to talk about, but damn did this guy get me hooked. Recently, YouTuber Red Nomster noticed certain symbols in Halo Infinite that harkened back to an old mystery from the Halo 3 map Sand Trap. He's been trying to decipher these ancient glyphs, and watching has been really intriguing so far. Check out Red Nomster here on YouTube. Following that, we have this excellent Kelly 087 figure based on her appearance on the cover of Halo Shadows of Reach. Check out it and the artist Bree on Twitter. After that, we have a Halo Infinite rap by JT Music titled, Give Up on the World. It's really damn good, and I say that as someone who doesn't often enjoy rap. Check it out here on YouTube. Next up, we have Great Scott Productions' latest entry in his Halo Wars 2 Phoenix Log series. If you haven't checked these out before, there's no better episode to jump in on. Check it out on YouTube. After that, we have a pair of pieces from artist Matthew on Twitter. One depicts an updated look for Urtas Varum, and the second features the Master Chief himself. Be sure to check out Matthew on Twitter. Next up, we have a Halo Infinite poster by artist Nick on Twitter. Each profile in the poster is individually painted, and damn does the final product look great. Check out Nick on Twitter. Continuing with posters for just a moment, our next features the characters of Halo in Mega Constructs form, and comes to us from Tom Jurassic. Check it out on Twitter. After that, we have a really cool Halo CE cinematic remake by Bacon Media, this time an extended version of the opening for Assault on the Control Room. Bacon's cinematic remakes have been spectacular, so give him a sub if you're looking forward to more. 
Next up we have a piece from artist The Wanderer, inspired by the cover of Halo The Flood. Check out this wonderful traditional media piece on Twitter. After that we have a fairly unique piece from Kevin Rageinit, I hope I didn't butcher that, on Twitter. I don't think I need to say much more, the piece really speaks for itself, and you'll find it listed below as Master Cheeks if you want to check it out yourself. Next up we have something of a twofer. User Apex Arts created an armor coating template people could use to design custom coatings, and Xenosynthesis used that to design some Bionicle themed skins. The day Halo crosses over with Bionicle will be a dream come true. Check out Apex Arts and Xenosynthesis on Twitter. Next, we have an article from Decepticon Cobra, diving into what makes Eshram such a compelling antagonist and character. Check it out in the links below. After that, we have something I never expected to see. It seems that Cody from Alternate History Hub has launched a new channel called Pointless Hub, and he recently did an episode on Halo Legends. If y'all are looking for some Halo content of a different flavor, definitely check this one out. Our penultimate shoutout goes to Amanda Lee Phoenix, with this fantastic piece featuring the Chief, the Pilot, and the Weapon. Check it out on Twitter. Finally, we come to the last shoutout, which goes to none other than Marcus Lado, who released his updated Halo CE assets for anyone to use on Christmas Day. Watching him build these on Twitter has been a lot of fun, and I'm glad that he found a way to make these available to the community at large. People have already made some amazing pieces with these assets. And that does it for this monthly recap. As always, links to everything we've discussed, from the news to the videos to the amazing creations from the community, can be found either in the description box below or the pinned comment. If there's ever anything y'all want to see highlighted in a future monthly recap video, leave a link in the comments below, or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, though I'm active on Twitter much more than the other two. And of course, you can always drop into the Halo Canon Discord, where I have a dedicated channel for the monthly recap, among other places to discuss all things Halo. Whatever your decision though, thank you for watching as always. The Patreon shoutout is just around the corner, and until next time, this has been Halo Canon. First, I'd like to give a big thank you to our Horospis patrons. First, there's Hope, then we have Freight, Discombobulated Sycophant, Justin Montgomery, Man in the Dark, Keisha Dila, Daddy Anarchy, Great Scott Productions, Jumpy Sucks Balls, Lone Ronin 117, Austin Cantrell, and Ever Corrado. Thank you all for your amazing support of the channel. Next, I'd like to thank our theoretical patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or get a direct shout out, check out patreon.com slash halocanon. You can simply support the channel or get additional benefits, such as behind the scenes materials, including raw audio for upcoming videos, or even shout outs like this. All patrons now get early access to certain videos as well, and your Patreon title will appear in the Halo Canon Discord. However, your continued viewership is more than enough for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. If you really enjoy my stuff, turn on that notification bell so you can be among the first to see new videos when they release. But for all my fellow Canonites, keep on being awesome.